Um, and before um, I introduce this episode, as we always do at RMIT, we'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which the university stands. And the university respectfully recognises elders, both past and present. And I always think it's very appropriate when we're standing here giving this welcome to country with William Barrack looking down at us from the building behind, just to remind us of a great Wurundjeri elder. I just want to say a few words to introduce the next episode of uh, Workaround and introduce our participants, people who I've collaborated with over the years and who helped me um, in all of the activities that you see displayed um, on the tables. Firstly, Karen. Um, Karen's already been part of Workaround. And of those of you who don't know her, she's an eminent architectural theorist and historian up at Melbourne Uni, the Melbourne School of Design. Then there's Dean Cass. Dean was our designer. Conrad Heyman, um, architectural historian extraordinaire. Philip Goad, who's now, of course, a professor of architecture at Melbourne um, School of Design. And Vanessa filled the space, and you just walked in one day and asked if you could help out, so you became the designer of the journal. Yeah, I managed to get the editor, so I took over the same role that Dean had, which was managing editor and designer. With no prior skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is actually the, the, the job description was no prior skills. You had to learn on the job. You couldn't possibly sort of, you know, employ someone who was trained in the job. So welcome. I think this is the 11th episode of Workaround. Um, which is a monumental undertaking by Design Hub. I'm Harriet Edquist, and I'm director of the uh, RMIT Design Archives. I was asked by the curatorial team uh, to occupy a day of work around, which foolishly I said yes, not quite realising what it would entail. But anyway, as we, our conversations uh, developed, the idea about the archives seemed to be important, the fact that we have the RIT archives and I've been occupied with that for the last 10 years. It's my day job. And also Transition, the magazine uh, that I edited for five years with Karen Burns from 1987 to 1992. And for those of you who don't know, and I suspect it's most of you here, Transition was an architectural journal. It was very well known at the time. And it was the first journal in Australia that was devoted to architectural discourse. So it didn't come out of the profession. It wasn't devoted to buildings and building criticism. It was actually devoted to discourse. And of course, architectural theory and discourse was really developing right around the world at this time. And transition uh, caught that moment. I found a letter, which I've got here, asking the age, this Mr. McLaughlin, who is editor of The Age, if he would do something in the age about transition. And I said here, that to celebrate 10 years of the magazine, we're holding a conference on Robin Boyd. It's the first time any reappraisal of Boyd's place in Australian architecture has been attempted in this way. And the papers will be collected into a book, which with some interviews with colleagues will be the first book ever published on Boyd. Um, and that ended up as the special issue of the journal. And then I said, um, in addition to the conference, there are a number of related activities. A public lecture at the NGV, which I've mentioned, which you see up there. An exhibition at the La Trobe Library, which is also up there. And then I'd forgotten the other two. We did a screening at the State Film Centre of the 1957 film Your House and Mine, which is what Peter McIntyre and Robin Boyd, yeah. And then we also did a viewing of some ABC film clips. So it was a sort of, you know, extravaganza, really. I mean, I think that's one of the most compelling issues because our context is still today an incredibly important resource. Um, and, you know, it's still coming up to the centenary for its birth next year, so it's probably going to get explosion of things next year. But, um, I mean, what was it that led you to turning um, the, the, the magazine issue into such an epic series of events? conference, the field, the tour, the exhibition. <laughs> I have no idea. I just, I just don't know. We just did it. 
Jesus, he does seem like a good idea at the time, but it's sort of insane, really. But uh, I suppose that's that idea of what can a journal be? It's more than a journal.